Let's look today in the book of Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number one. And we'll be taking a look at verses five through twenty-five. Luke chapter number one. We know that this right here is a season that um, which we uh, look at as a Christmas season, or uh, there's another term is Advent. We know that this right here is pointing towards Jesus Christ, his birth. And so we take this time out to just to kind of go in that direction with the word of God. But today we're going to look at Luke chapter number one and starting at verse number five. And here we're going to be talking about a man by the name of of Zechariah. Now Zechariah, uh, his name, the name Zechariah means the Lord remembers, the Lord remembers. And uh, we're going to, uh, a key verse in chapter of this, our verses here, if you look down in verse number 13, it would see that, you would see that verse 13 says, but the angel said unto him, fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name John. And so once again, our title today is The Lord Remembers. And Zechariah's name means the Lord remembers. Um, I'm sure that each and every one of us may have asked God. When I say ask God, I'm saying that we pray to God and ask him for something and uh, we may not have seen it uh, come to pass. And then periodically we would ask God or pray to God the same question or the same request. And then we see that maybe it did not come to pass. And then we would turn around and ask God or pray to God that same request. And we see that it did not come to pass. And then we would continue to ask God and pray to God about that request. But I'm here to tell you today, according to what the Bible says, is that whatever request that we submit and send, ask God or questions that we ask, God remembers. Mm-hmm. God remembers. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes we may think that he doesn't hear us or he has forgotten what we asked. It's more than likely we have forgotten what we've asked in the past mm-hmm. than what God uh, we, we think that God will forget something he doesn't uh, or we would have forgotten about it so a question or something that we would ask God years ago for we would have just gone over our lives and forgotten all about it because another drama, dramatic thing happened in our lives and we just continued on and we thrown up so many other requests to God and uh, but God has never forgotten any of our requests Sometimes whenever we ask for something, um, and it's just like our children, we, we, we would really look at uh, our request to God similar to what our children may ask us. Let's say that our um, uh, eight-year-old child would ask something. What do you think an eight-year-old child would ask for that you know them well and the person should have? You go away, what would you say? Which one to ask your parents? Yeah. Which one to ask? For a bike. All right. Say for a bike. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Huh? They? Ask for something that, that you know you shouldn't have right now. A phone. A phone. Mom said a phone. Give me a million dollars right now. 
And then God would respond immediately and says, no. <laughs> and then our response to God would be what? Why? He said, we The Carol said, I'm not giving up. <laughs> but both of us said, why? And God would immediately respond and say, you ain't ready, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Nor will you ever be, you know. <laughs> so, but God knows us. Yes. And he knows when we really need something. And also he knows if we need something. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that he would give us the desires of our heart. Yes. But God knows best. Y'all ever seen that movie? If you haven't seen it, you've ever heard of it. Father knows yes. best. Uh, and um, so, so our parents know best. Our Father, our Heavenly Father knows best. Uh -huh. Here this particular area in the Bible begin to talk about Zechariah and I'm going to pick up at verse number 5 because the beginning of this particular book, uh, Luke, it talks about the author and who he's writing this for. Uh, and matter of fact, it would be good for me just to cover that. Here's what it says. It says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration or a narrative of those things which are most surely believed among us. So he's talking to someone who is a believer. And then he goes on and says in verse number two, Even as they delivered them unto us, talking about the word, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Okay, so we now how, how he's honing in exactly what he's talking about. It seemed good to me also. And the author of this particular writing is who? Uh, I mean, of, this, of this particular, okay, this particular writing is, is Luke, right? Okay, he said, it seemed good to me also having had, look at this. Perfect understanding, he says, mm -hmm. or accurately followed, of all things from the very first to write, or in an orderly account, unto thee, in order, uh, most, look at this, most excellent Theophilus. Uh, so Luke is writing this letter, or this, this manuscript, to most excellent Theophilus. And Theophilus means friend of God. And then it also lets us know that this particular person was, was, was somewhat of high standing. That's what this right here says. So he was writing this so this man who is a believer can have some, a better understanding of all that he has heard. Uh, and this helps us. And so Luke um, is also a, uh, he's a tent maker, right? Luke. No? Oh, he's a physician. Okay, Luke, Luke, Luke is a physician. He's a doctor. So this doctor here, who's, who really uh, is uh, tuned in and uh, to many of the, of the specifics of the gospel or the story or narrative in which he's writing. So when he's writing, we can really take into account or understand that the way he's writing it is exactly or more or less as close as possible as it was. He says, verse 4, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. So Theophilus has been instructed. He's, he's been taught. And, and a lot of the Jewish people have been taught from children, from children on up. Uh, that's one thing lacking in our society is teaching our children the gospel message. Uh, from, uh, what is it, from crib to, to grown up. Uh, but one of the things that in order for us to teach our children about the gospel and about this, this story, we shouldn't just wait for Christmas to do it. But, but the thing is, one of the problems and one of the reasons why we have not taught our children, okay, two years old, okay, uh, on up, is because the parent has to know the gospel too. Y'all catch that? Did you catch that? The parent has to know it too. Or also, you see, we've come across two-year-olds on YouTube doing what? The stanky... <laughs> we've come across two-year-olds, they really can't talk yet, right? Uh, be able, and three-year-olds, be able to do these things on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. 
They've been what? Taught. They've been taught. And here we see that that in, in uh, the uh, the this population who this uh, with who the especially the Old Testament is written or of for whom God has come have chosen the Jewish people have to, uh, they have a, a, a mandate a command to teach their children while they're laying down while they're walking by the way while they're well, what is it sitting and eating while they're what, what are they being taught the Bible or the law then. That's what they've been taught. That's what's been put in them. You see? That's been put in them. That's what's, what's in you is going to what? Come out. Come out. So then when our children are away from us, we don't have to worry about our child. So we don't have to say that, no, not our child. You know, so we, we can say that, but we know that our child will be mixed up in that stuff. Why? Because we put Jesus. in them. You see, and that's, what, that's what's got to happen. So here Theophilus was instructed. And what Luke wanted to do was make sure that he had the full narrative of Jesus Christ. He goes on, look at verse number five right here. He says, he picks up right here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to put this in three points right here in our passages. And number one, desire of the heart. Desire of the heart. I mean, I'm just going to insert this and we'll, we'll walk down. Sometimes we aren't the ones to do what we want or desire. But God can still use us to prepare the way for the one whom he chooses. Y'all catch that? Sometimes we aren't the ones to do what we want or desire but God can still use us to prepare the way for the one whom he chooses. Case in point, King David. King David had a desire to build God a temple. To build God somewhere. To, to build God a building, a temple. And God responded to David, yes, King David, I know your heart. And your heart is right. But your hands. <laughs> your hands are what? Full of bloodshed. But here's what I want you to do. You will have your son yes, will be the one to build it. I know your heart, but it'll be your son. Yep. So what does David do? King David prepares the way for whom? King Solomon. The only thing King Solomon may do is just walk in and everything is already set up for him. Everything is there. So King David made sure that everything was in place. So he can, so his son can be able to, to take care of what needs to be done. You see what happened? You see what it is? His child. So what did King David do? He groomed his child up to be able to do what? Take over. We got to learn how to teach our children as they're growing up to do what? Take over. We're failing. We've got to teach them. We've got to do that. We're grown up. We've got to do that. We can't leave it to somebody else. We can't leave it to another grown up to do. Amen. not their child. Amen. We've got to do it. Here, another case in point. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be real bad. Martin Luther what? King Jr. He wasn't the one because, you know, he died or was killed when he was only, was it 39 years old? 39 years old. And the majority of us in here was over 40 years old. 
And he was 39 years old. And what he accomplished during his lifetime, we can only dream of sometimes. But he wasn't the one. But what did he do? He prepared the way. For whom? The rest of us. To be able to continue on in that traje trajectory or that path. Case in point. You. Me. We may not be the one. We haven't made it. We're not there. But while we're pressing on, we should be the ones to do what? Teach our children. Bring them along. <laughs> it's our responsibility. Y'all remember back in, <coughs> back in the day, wasn't a long day ago, wasn't a long time ago, but when you remember these churches, you had these church vans and stuff. And I used to drive a church van and go by somewhere and all you see coming out were the children. That means that the parents did what? And what? Sent the children. But God is saying that he's holding who responsible for the children. Not somebody else. And Verse 5, it says this right here. There was in the days of Herod, king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah. And his name means the Lord remembers. Okay, the Lord remembers. Of the course of Abijah. And his wife uh, was of the daughters of Aaron. And her name was Elizabeth and they were both righteous before God meaning that they were they were trying their best they were doing their best to live for God doing what what should have been doing been done and to do the right thing it says that walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord look at this blameless I mean they did everything right is that what it means? Everything right. Yeah. Even when they were tired. When they really didn't want to go. I mean, after all, on the Sabbath, which is what day? Saturday. Saturday. Yes. And, they, and they still wanted to, they still went. After all, they, they, they worked how long? Six days a week, right? And then they turn on the seventh day, end up having to do what? Go to the synagogue and, and they just do what they had to do. And you know what? I'm here to tell you. When they did synagogue, when they went there, it wasn't for no three hours, it wasn't for no two hours, it wasn't for no one hour. It was almost all day. And some and, and even today it's done the same way. Because there were processes, there were things that which had to be done and, and, it, would, and it took time to do. So I doubt very seriously if any synagogue had a clock in there right in today, have a clock in their place. We got one for our convenience. Hmm? And so when the preacher said, you look at the clock and the preacher looked at me, you know it's time to go. Y'all catch that? <laughs> so I'm going to tell y'all what secret I did. I took my glasses off. <laughs> so I can't see you, nor the clock. <laughs> Look, he goes on and says this right here. Look at verse number seven. He says that, uh, and, they had, and they had no child because that Elizabeth was, why didn't she have a child? And barren means she just couldn't have any children. And it says, and they both were now, what's that? They were well stricken in age. Somebody say, oh. Okay. <laughs> they were well stricken in age. Yeah, they were old. Look at verse number eight. And it came to pass that 
while while he executed or while he served the priest's office, Zechariah was a priest. While he served the priest's office before God in the order of, of, of his course or what he, what he had to do or that division. Look at verse 9. According to the custom of the priest's office, what is that? His, um, okay, his job, right? Or his lot uh, was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Glasses on. Okay. Look at this. Y'all see that layout? If you can see it. You see right there, you see the layout? There's, there's altar sacrifice. We first go into this whole uh, carbon off area. There's an altar sacrifice. It's where an animal is sacrificed, okay? The priest would sacrifice the animal, and then there's a label. And that label, what the priest, because the priest right now is all bloody, right? Because he just sacrificed an animal. So now, when that label is full of water, okay? And he washed himself in there before he went into the holy place. All right? So then he goes into the holy place. And in the holy place, there are three items there. There is a table of bread to the right. You see that? Which is up there. And there's a lampstand to the left. The lampstand is always lit. And then there's the altar of what? Incense. Y'all see that? And there's the altar of incense. And that thing before the altar of incense is uh, this, uh, what do you call it? Big curtain, right? This thing that, that blocked anybody from going on the other side. Right. On the other side was called the Holy of Holies or the Most Holy Place. That's where the altar of God was. That's where the that's where um God was, his presence was. And nobody was to go on the other side of that except the uh the, the high priest at uh, at uh who is it? One time a year, right? And that was for what was that? Right, so, so all sins can be forgiven, right? It's not the name of it. What's the word? It's the name of the word. He, uh, the, the high priest went out went there once a year. Atonement. Year of the, atonement, okay? Year of atonement. Thank you, uh, Brother Richard. Uh, the atonement. So what happens is that uh, then that's when the high priest would go over there. But right now, what this priest's duty was is to light the altar of incense. And the altar of incense was whenever, and, and the, the incense was a specific, and it had to be right, whatever the, uh, the ingredients were, it had to be right, and that priest were to, were to uh, put that on, on, the, on those hot coals, and then the smoke would go up, okay? The smoke would go up, and then when that smoke goes up, it's, it's like, it's like uh, prayers going up before God, right? Prayers going up before God. And he takes in the sweet smelling yeah. aroma. Yeah. Uh, and then it goes up before God. And that's the prayers of the saints, the prayers of the of the righteous. And then that priest uh, would be able to go to the other side as long as he doesn't drop dead because of because of sin that he may he may have, okay? Uh, so so yes, Zechariah had a desire in his heart. Uh, what was that desire? To have did we read that yet? To have a son. It says, look at verse number 9. Which says, According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Look at 10. And the whole multitude of the people were praying, look at this, outside at the time of incense or at that hour. So what happened is that people on outside of, of the tent and everything, they were praying. The priest, when he went there, he was praying. Because you know what? When that priest goes in, he also want to do what? He also want to come out. You see, what, what tradition or what, what is said is that he would have something wrapped around them, okay? So just in case he does die, then he'll be what? Nobody else can go in. They got to cut. Who am I? And you know what I mean? Uh, you know, somebody's going to look at each other. It's your turn. Oh, uh -huh, your turn. Uh, so they're going to gonna pull him out. Uh, so, uh, so yes, that priest is going in there and he's praying also. And then look at verse number 11. And there appeared unto him, look at unto Zechariah, an angel of the Lord standing on the right side. Look at this. Standing on the, what is that? Right side. <laughs> Wow, you see that? He was standing on that right side of, wow. 
here, here he is, just right there, doing what he's supposed to do. Brought more, I can take this time, make sure he's doing it right. And the, and the angel appeared on the right side. What do you think Zechariah did then? <laughs> he didn't run, that's for sure. We know that already. <laughs> but then again, you know, in the present, hey, he, he, he no doubt was just frozen, probably, you know. Um, and he goes on, he says this right here. Look at verse number 12. He says, and when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. He froze. I mean, that's what fear do that to you sometimes, you know, and, and, and but you know what? You got to break out of that thing because you got to do something after that. You just can't stay there. You know, you know that one? You can't park here. You, you got to get up. You got you to gotta do something. Look, he goes look at 13. And here's our key verse. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah. Call him by name. So God knows. He hears our prayers. He remembers. He says, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. Thy prayer is heard. I want to quickly take us back to Daniel right fast. I, I, I love this whenever it comes to prayer and whenever it, it comes to questionable prayers or whenever we pray to God and ask God for something. I, I always love to come right back to Daniel uh, to chapter number, chapter number 10. Chapter number 10 and then verse number 12 of Daniel. Uh, Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. Here's what it says. It says this. It says... Then said he unto me. Here's what happened just to set this up. Daniel was praying. Okay. And then the Bible said that he prayed for 21 days. He was fasting and everything. Verse 12 says, Then said he unto me. Talking about, uh, D D Daniel was talking about an angel that came to him. Uh, uh, then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. From, for, from, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to, what is that? Yes. Chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were what? Heard. Heard. And I am come for what? Y'all see that? That angel came because of what? The words, the prayer. So that means that our prayers, uh, they mean something to God. God hears our prayers. God will act upon our prayers. God will respond to our prayers. How does God do it in this particular instance? God sent an angel, a messenger, straight to Daniel to let him know your prayer was heard from the very first day that you set your heart to me. What happened over in the New Testament, over in Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter number 1, verse number 13, that we were talking about, God sent an angel, there was a messenger, his name was what? Gabriel. God sent him to let him know your prayer was heard. Your prayer was heard. And he goes back in, in, back, back in Luke chapter number 1, verse number 13, again it says, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. As Mother uh, was talking about during Sunday school, Mother Van talked about Sunday school back in the day before they had the, uh, those things that we were trying to come up with. Sonograms and, uh, and what those other things called? The ultrasounds and, uh, and all these other things. And now they come out with these. <laughs> well, they can't. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, these, these gender, what do you call them? Oh, yeah. Gender yeah, parties, yeah, you know, <laughs> gender reveals and stuff like that. And so what happened is that this right here, Abel told, amen, uh, the father told uh, Zechariah, you're going to have a son, your, your wife, she's going to be pregnant, and you're going to have a son, and you'll call his name John. How's that John? And that's a messenger, that's a message from God. He sent a messenger to tell Zechariah this. And then he goes on and says in verse 14, <laughs> He says this right here, y'all. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. 
For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Y'all catch that? He ain't going to drink nothing. No Mad Dog 2020. He ain't going to drink no Wild Irish Road. He ain't going to drink no Thunderbird. He ain't drinking none of that stuff, y'all. Y'all say, how he knew about all those things? <laughs> and then he went way back to something that don't nobody drink. Mm-hmm. Ah, he know. Okay. It shall drink neither wine nor a strong drink. And he shall be filled with the, with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. See, John the Baptist, I'm talking about John the Baptist, he already has a mission, y'all. Yes. And likewise, we have a mission. Why? Because God knew us what, before we were formed in our, in our mother's womb. He has a mission for us. And all we have, not all we have to do like is that easy, right? <laughs> but we, we have to align with his word. When we align with his word by first of all being saved, accepting Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, then we, okay, because God already done what he's done. We have to have a desire, a yearning for his word so much so that we're alive when we begin to walk in it. And as we walk in it, he puts those things in our way, which they've always been there. And then we begin to see what God has for us. Yeah. He goes on. He says this. In verse number 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah. And we all know about the Elijah. We already know this power and the spirit of Elijah. We already know that Elijah called, he prayed, he called, he said that he commanded that it would not rain for two years and two months. Oh, three years and six months, thank you. you it, it, it would not rain for three years and six months. Just that much power. And the Bible says that afterwards he prayed again and commanded the rain and it rained. The Elijah. So much power. So much anointing. That even his servant Elisha just said that even if he would just simply see his, his master go up if he will receive a dull portion of his spirit. The Bible says that Elisha ended up with a double portion of that anointing from Elijah. We have got to be an example for our children. We have got to lead them on. He says, verse 17 continues and says that to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people, look at this, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And secondly, the first one was desire of the heart. Secondly, there are obstacles, obstacles encountered. 18, and Zechariah said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. And my wife, she old too. <laughs> Paraphrase the Sister Carolyn. <laughs> well stricken in age. Obstacles encountered. What is an obstacle? An obstacle is something that will get in your way yes, sir. and will stay in your way if you let it. An obstacle can also be used to step up on, get a little higher. So the obstacles that may come in our way, and we have many of them. They can be tangible and mostly intangible. Most of the time we don't see it. But obstacles come in our way. But obstacles are there for us to get over them. They're not there to keep us back. They're there to let us know, yes, challenges may come, 
but we can persevere. We are that kind of, of, of people. We can persevere. Why? Because of God. Because of what he has blessed us with. Because of who we are. We are holy. What do you mean holy? Because God says so. And nobody can take that away from you. But I don't walk like the other person walks. Neither does the other person walk like anyone else. We all got our own walk. That's literally and spiritually. He goes on, and so yes, obstacles are, are encountered in verses 18 through 20. So the Bible also lets us know, let, lets us know and I'm going to find that particular passage before I try to quote, because I have a tendency of forgetting uh, uh, one thing or another, and, and I want to make sure when I quote this, it's appropriate and it's biblical. Uh, it's, well, first of all, I got to know where to find it in order to quote it, don't I? Well, anyways, here it goes. It's, there is no temptation that has taken us. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm not going to quote that then, okay? Because any temptation that come our way, God already knows, right? And he'll give us a way of escape. Yeah. I want to make sure I quote the right the, uh, verbatim, okay? And I did not have that in my head. Uh, so uh, that's what happens when it comes to obstacles. They can come in forms of temptations, come in, in, in all type of forms. But the thing is that God has given us, amen, what it takes in order to get over, amen, those temptations, those obstacles. Why? Because God remembers. The Lord remembers. Anything that comes our way, the Lord remembers. And he gives us what we need in order to overcome those obstacles or those particular, amen, situations that come up in our, in our lives. But not only do we have a desired heart and, and also obstacles that may come uh, our way in verses 18, amen, through 20, it says... Right now, Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am old, old man, and my wife well stricken. And 19 says, And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, to show thee these glad tidings. What is good news? That's what Gabriel was. The messenger sent by God, an angel sent by God, to tell him, Amen, these glad tidings. What does an angel do? What God tells them to do. Okay? Uh, verse 20 says, And behold, thou shalt be dumb. What is that? Can't speak. Okay. Thou shalt be mute and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. Why? Because you didn't believe his words. The angel was offended. God sent the word. To him, and he did not accept the word. Whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all catch that? God sent his word. It was the word was delivered. And it was not accepted. It didn't stop him. For God so loved the word that he sent his only begotten son, his word, his word, his word, only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. Sin his word. And so many people will not accept his word. Amen. But here, Zechariah became dumb or mute. He couldn't speak. Hmm. What has God done to the people who have not accepted Jesus Christ as word? The Bible lets us know that the, that, 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 the, that the God of this world is blinded. And they, would, and they would not receive that gospel message. And so, what does God do? God then, he, he enlists us to go out. Some plant, some water, and we'll see God give the increase. He goes on and says this right here. 
He says, perform because thou believest thou not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. In his own time. And that's what it is. When we pray, when we ask God for something, it may not happen when we want it, but it's always going to happen when God has it already assigned to happen. That's what, that's what happens. So therefore, when we pray, it's done. He hears us. God remembers. And we can just continue on. He goes on and, and says, lastly, 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 verses 24, of, uh, as, as we continue on, verse 21 says, And the people waited for Zechariah and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. That's a man that don't want to talk. He, look, look out. He ain't saying nothing. What's wrong with him? He ain't saying nothing. Now, look, when God has done something for you and to you, sometimes you just, yeah, and you can't, there's not a whole bunch you can say. You know, but just say thank you. You know, because if I say too much, that'll, that'll do something wrong I, and, and all kinds of, but we just got to obey what God, amen, gives us to say. Uh, and because if he could have said something, he probably would have said too much. Who, 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 you know, <laughs> uh, but here's what happened. Look at verse 23. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration or his service were accomplished or completed, right? And he, he departed to his own house. And then lastly, uh, the desire fulfilled. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord, look at this y'all, dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. The desire fulfilled. Reproach was taken away. The reproach was taken away from whom? Keep in mind, y'all. Elizabeth was there. The priest, her husband, Zachariah, he had a desire. So if he had a desire, what was his desire, y'all? To have a child, right? To have a son. And so not only did she have a reproach, but the reproach is also upon him. Because he wanted a son so bad. Why? Look, remember, he was from the line of Abijah, this priestly line. And what did he want to do? He wanted to pass to the law to his son. So that was his desire. Elizabeth accepted her situation, yet it was still reproach. There was nothing she could do about it. But a man prayed. Isn't that something about prayer? <clears throat> you never know what God will do. Amen. If he's done for others, he'll do for you. Amen. God performed miracles after miracles. When it comes to the Lord. Amen. The Lord remembers. He did not forget about you. The Bible says he will not forsake you. So you belong to him. And if you belong to him. That means he's your heavenly father. And if he's your heavenly father. Then he's going to see about you. Yes we can ask. We can pray for this. We can pray for something. Who knows. 
but just do it. Nike did it. Why can't we? Why not? If he's did it for somebody else, he can do it for us. Amen. These are miracles because man had nothing to do with it. It was God. Some of us need miracles in our lives. Yes, sir. Because it seems like man's hand just, it ain't working. <clears throat> but what we got to do is just like Zechariah did. Surrender. We've got to give up. We've got to take our hands off of it. We pray, God remembers. At that right time, God will bring it forth. The door to church is open, let us stand.